Oh, God. Okay. That doesn't look good, but uh, what's up, everybody? <laughs> We're back. Another edition of Fed Dead Redemption. Uh, big week this week. We got Clash at the Castle to preview. Robert O'Neill joined by the Oracle of Wrestling and Montgomery from Russell Purist. Uh Oracle, how you doing today, bud? I'm doing fantastic. I was here right on time, and there was this bizarre sort of idle video playing. It was very confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's a new thing for when we're on Twitch, man. Uh, gets people time to get here and all that. Um, yeah. It's good stuff. There we go. My God. There we go. Uh, Monty, how you doing, bud? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm loving the uh, the upped production levels here on the uh, late night grid. You know. I know. It's a big deal, man. Um but yeah, I mean, you know, Clash of the Castle coming up. I think we'll focus on that mostly. There's a couple things from SmackDown and Raw we can get into um, if you guys eh. really want to. But, you know, SmackDown was kind of okay. Raw was actually very good for about two hours and 55 minutes. Um, <laughs> and they just absolutely fumbled the ending. I liked it. You know, they, they had a nice mix of, like, matches and segments for once. It had been a really match-heavy the past few weeks. I liked the balance they found. And then that ending was rough. But, uh, Monty, did you like Raw overall? Yeah, I think I agree with you for the most part that it was a good show um, for, you know, until the main event, uh, you know, the decision of who was going over, but also the execution of it and everything. It was just, uh, I thought it was just a bit of a mess all round. <laughs> so, you know, it was a good show except for that. And it's a shame because that is obviously the talking point coming out of it. So, you know. Yeah. Oracle, did you like Raw? Uh, I agree that like it was weird because the match heavy stuff. I think a lot of people really enjoyed that, but like, I don't know. <laughs> 10, 12 years ago, I would have like pop for that, but like, mm. I kind of want like a better mix now, and I appreciated that for the most part. Um, yeah, the main event sucked. Whatever. Like, <laughs> I, I definitely wasn't ex- like I definitely wasn't expecting Raquel and. Uh, uh, <laughs> Fucking Aaliyah to win the tag t- tag titles, but um, I don't know, man. Like, I see some people are like, let's 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 hold out, and you know, uh, maybe maybe there's a reason for this, and I don't know. I mean, well, here's the thing: like, people are like, oh, do you just want you know Eo and Dakota to win and then lose to Sasha and Naomi whenever they come back? And like, well, they lost anyway, so if they're gonna lose anyway, they might as well lose to the better team. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. So it's it's been kind of weird. Um, you know, hopefully they have some sort of plan with it. But, yeah, really confusing ending to the whole tournament. But uh, overall, you know, they're doing a good job trying to make those titles important again, at least in presentation. But, yeah, yeah the execution was not ideal. But uh, it was – honestly, it was a pretty bad tournament. Like, there was really no good matches. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. last week's – last week's uh, – um, Alexa, Lexi, all caps. I have to like every time I think it, I fucking say Lexi, all caps every time now. Uh, and 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 Oscar versus Dakota and Io was was fine. Like I kind of popped for it at the time, just because like especially like the double DDT spot, which popped me. Um, but got him on the feet. I'm like the the, the the matches were just terrible. And like, look, like the people they put in there were not great either. Like it's just, I don't know. Presentation has been nice, but there's there's definitely some disappointment to come out of it, especially from the final result. But hopefully, hopefully there's there's improvements to come. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think that's kind of where everyone is. Like, and it almost feels like they should have just done the tournament after the pay per view, just because I think the kind of build of the trios match has gotten sacrificed a little bit the past couple weeks. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. See how it goes. Um. Let's see. We got a couple comments. The Oracle, we got a question for you. Uh, yeah, I have like two or three Jimmy Rave shirts. Rest in peace. Uh, I got these like, I think I got these when he won the SCI like six or seven years ago. Oh, there you go. Um, I also have like three of the same kind of SCI shirts, and like, <laughs> oh, that's I have. This is all like my home T-shirts, and like I've worn like the same like four or five shirts on air mm-hmm. here. The yeah. last year, and people probably think I'm some. Well, let's be honest, I am a bum with no clothes, but at least <laughs> <laughs> I just have four or five that I wear uh, around the apartment. Yeah, there you go. Um, are either of you going to watch Worlds Collide? <sighs> I 
I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> I kind of want to see. I kind of want to see if Ma- if if uh, Mako gets like fed up with Mandy Rose and kind of shoots on her for a minute. Um. Otherwise. Yeah, I mean, it's tough too. Like, it's three pay per views that weekend and all the football and stuff. It's like, I'll football, go back and watch. If... I got to help a friend move. Like now they're trying to come get me to help do some other shit on Saturday. <laughs> and like, <clears throat> I don't know, man. Like I got, a, I got a <laughs> fantasy football drafts and shit. And it's, yeah. It's I feel I'm like all in, nice. man. I'm all in. No, oh, there you go. Birmingham's toilet bites in the main event. You know, we already <laughs> bought one. We already bought one world title book back to Birmingham in the UFC. This week. Um, when was it? A week ago. Leon Edwards. Um, and, you know, we're bringing the NXT title back to Birmingham as well. <laughs> Tyler Bates going to beat Bron Breaker. Bron Breaker is going to go up to the main roster. Um, you know, we'll see if uh, Mandy Rose gets the shit kicked out of her. It'll be, it'll be fun, man. It'll be fun. It should be. Yeah, I mean, like, the Bron Breaker match should be very good. Um, it feels like there hasn't really been a build, but they don't really need a build to this sort of thing, I guess. Mm-mm. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. I might go back and watch it if I hear it's good. Especially after what Bron Broke has been doing lately. Like, he's been doing so much dog shit. But yeah. just, like, see him in the ring with someone that I actually like. And that yeah. person being Tyler Bate, who I'm a huge fan of. Probably a bit biased towards. So, That's um, fair. Yeah. That's <laughs> Bates, Bates a good wrestler. He's he's a good wrestler. The stuff they put Breaker in has just been just... Oh, the feuds. I, I It's literally fast-forward material. I can't watch it. Like, yeah. The feuds are just awful. <clears throat> yeah. Awful. Listen, Aaliyah, I don't even know that she's necessarily terrible, but she's been there too long to be where she's at. Yeah. Um, she's been there for, I think she came in with, like, Bailey. Yeah. My Jeez, question is, man. what does she know? Who, who, like, like, how many skeletons in the closet does she have access to? Yeah. She's, uh, I think she's pretty down there, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> she's... Yeah. I mean, honestly, good good for her to hold the job as long as she has, you know, yeah. seriously. But, like, it's... Well... Mm. I mean, I get, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm... <laughs> I saw a picture I saw a picture of her doing a slave gimmick on the Indies. And, uh... Oh. It's, uh... <laughs> it's, 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 it's not good. It's yeah, not it's not good. great. It's not great at all, bro. <laughs> it's, uh... I, I, wow. I, um... I knew some people were saying that, like, you know, she's uh, she's had she's got some questionable uh, opinions, and mm. there's been a few posts and stuff. But I didn't know that she full on like had a slave as a gimmick and stuff. <laughs> like, um, it's an old picture, obviously, but like even still, that's yeah. wild. I don't care how young you was; that is fucking crazy. <laughs> so, hey, no. man, I grew up going to Southern Indie shows. You ain't seen shit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, so get into the castle. It's way it's, worse. It um, it's a shoot sellout. I mean, they got what sixty five thousand people there, or whatever. It's going to be a big show. It just yeah. if this is the card, which it kind of seems like it is, because SmackDown's already been taped. It isn't. I think as good as it could be, but we can get into it. Um, I guess we'll start with the match that they added last night with Edge and Ray against Judgment Day, which. I don't know, man. I was kind of hoping they'd just do Edge and Finn and we'd kind of be done mm. with all this. Um, I know they probably want to turn Dom or whatever, but like, does this match do anything for either of you? Oracle, I know it doesn't really do anything for you, but um, you know, are you looking forward to it at least? I mean, Ray has been exceptional this year. Yeah. Like, yeah. <clears throat> we, I've never really thought that he was going down south. Like, mm-hmm. well, I mean, he goes down south to get his, uh, you know, um stem cell it's true but <laughs> but in terms of like going down in terms of, of uh in ring like he's just so good i mean i i think he'll be good here as always balor has a certain viciousness that i really appreciate uh that he works as a heel um priest is whatever um i liked him more as like the nxt mid-card baby face honestly yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Edge, I've never been an Edge fan, but like in tag team setting, he's fine. Um, I'm not, I'm not hugely into this. Rhea Ripley is like weirdly entertaining, is like this like domineering outside force for them. Um, 
they're obviously playing layers with that, but like it's 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 entertaining. A lot of layers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, based off of what we saw last night with like Dom, like they spent like five minutes with like Dom slowly like giving her the kendo stick. That was so um, weird, bro. <laughs> so weird. I'm, I'm guessing I'm guessing Dom turns here. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, we and then up. what do you do from there? Like you do the Ray match, you do Ray feud and match, and then what do you do with them? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. That's that's a great question. I mean, but then again, they might just be teasing it the whole time and then just don't deliver on it, and then it's over here and Ray and Edge win the tag. I mean, I don't know. That's it's, true. It's honestly tough to. It makes the it would make the most sense from what they're trying to tell on TV that Dom turns, and then I think Edge and Finn have like an Extreme Rules match in October at Extreme Rules or whatever, okay. and then Edge beats Finn. And then it's kind of just Ray feuding with Dom for the rest of the year. Thrilling. Mm-hmm. But do you think Dom, do we think Dom like, joins the judgment there? Or does he just turn heel? That's a good question. Yeah, I mean I guess it depends, because like this could be the end of like the Ray stuff with Judgment Day, and then Edge can keep feuding with them for whatever reason. But like I don't know if Dom really fits with them. Especially because they what do you do with him? Yeah, that's the thing. Like again, you do the Ray match, and he honestly should just go to NXT after that. But I don't think they're going to do that because I think if if you send him to NXT, he wouldn't be as bad. Like you know, I I don't think he's bad. He just is main roster bad. Mm, He's kind of bad. No, what did what did Don't Have an Ass say? He said uh, uh, Don would join um... Ricardo. Huh? Yeah, could you imagine? Dom has no swagger at all. Like, yeah, you know, in that group with all these guys, with like, I in mean, a suit. <laughs> yeah. Well, really, it's it's um, uh, oh gosh, why are their names blanking on me? Um, the woman and the and the leader of the group, Santos, and the woman are the one. No, Electro like, swagger. They 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 carry that. I mean, the other guys are good workers, but they don't have as much. They don't have as much charisma. They don't have the presence, right? Or, right. For what they're doing. Right. Yeah. I just, imagine Dom in that group. <laughs> yeah, I'm not right. like, Santos would have some, you know, some killer matches, I think. But. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I think they should do that. I just, you kind of only have so many things you can do with Dom at this point. And I don't know how much further you can really go along with this, but whatever. We'll see, I guess. Monty, you fired up for the tag match. Uh, not really. Like I did, kind of hope it was just going to be the singles match, but yeah, you know, yeah. any excuse to see Ray go out on a pay per view, I'm not mm-hmm. going to complain that much about it. I guess, but you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I guess we will move on to the SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, you know, Liv Morgan against Shayna Baszler. I, I think it's going to be better than Liv and Ronda, which I mean. Yeah, that's a low bar, but I think, you know, Liv's going to actually get some offense in this time. Um, They'll actually get to work a proper match. I don't know exactly what the finish is going to be. I think Liv's going to leave with the title, but I don't know if Ronda gets involved for a DQ or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, I have higher hopes for this one, I guess, than I did for uh, the Ronda match. But they've done a decent job with the build, I think. Um, Monty, you on board here? Mm. I'm just really stru- I'm struggling to care about this uh, about this match in particular. And uh, I popped when Liv won the title. You know, mm-hmm. uh, she won the world famous Wrestle Purist Wrestler of the Week that week. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people got very mad at us. The Diva stands loved it, but you know, um, but yeah, man, I think this title reign could be. Uh... The thing is with Liv, she just doesn't. She isn't giving me those champion vibes right mm-hmm. now. Um, the chase was quite, you know, it was it was a fun ride, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> even of course, of course, it was a money in the bank crashing, so it was kind of sudden. But even still, but now that she's actually the champ, it to be, I don't know, feels a bit yeah. dicey. So uh, no, I feel you. Like you know, Joe said, it feels like she just has like a toy title, and ever since he said that, it's kind of all I can see. <laughs> Yeah, I see. I see. Definitely. Um, I, lo- I do really like Bowser, to be honest. Um, it'll be interesting to see what she can get out of this. 
mm-hmm. um, what they do with her after if she yes. just there to eat a pin and disappear back into the mid card and being random tagged um or is she going to be a legitimate player like i think a lot of people think she should be i think Baszler's okay i think someone of her style and her presence is good to have on the roster um when people start to say stuff like you know she's should be world champion now etc i think it's a bit i don't know <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah. you know I, I do like Baszler. she's she's uh i was gonna say a good hand but that seems mean uh but you know you get yeah, the I get you. <laughs> oracle you excited for this one i mean it... <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the whole thing's been centered around Stone Cold Ronda Rousey. Yeah. So like, you know, her beating up cops and security and so on and so forth. And um, SmackDown spoilers. It continues this this week, I think. So, mm-hmm. um, I don't think anybody cares if we spilled SmackDown spoilers here, but maybe. But I don't know. I used to read that shit all the time, man. Every Tuesday, every Tuesday night, like two a.m., four a.m. We'll let's see what happened on SmackDown. Let's see if Sheamus had a good ten-minute match here <laughs> in like twenty twelve. But uh, I mean, I don't know, man. This 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 isn't this isn't that thrilling to me. Like, I'm kind of with Monty. Like the the title reign has just been porous. Partly, partly, she's being sabotaged in a way. Mm-hmm. intentionally or unintentionally mm-hmm. and i also think it's just she's not really delivering all that much as a champ either i think it's both probably more so that she's being sabotaged in some way or another and again unintentional or not um but i don't know it's just Shayna. i do enjoy um i wouldn't i'm not sure i'd give her the world title either i mean the way she wrestles gives her longevity because she's she's up there in age mm. um but i i still think she's fit better as like a the occasional like bully heel that you go up against in a title reign um because she's a very solid te- a sound uh wrestler yeah yeah i do think it'll be better than the ronda match but i'm i'm still not like excited for it i guess mm. no that makes sense i i can agree with that um I guess we'll go to Matt Riddle. He's Matt Riddle again, by the way. You got his name back. It's all been a whole big thing today. There's been a lot of other news about him. Too, oh, yeah. so, cool. You know. Um, he's facing Seth Rollins. Uh, Monty, I'll start with you on this one, because I think I know about where Oracle's going to be. But uh, are you looking forward to this one? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I am, to be honest. Uh, Riddle, for all the weirdness that he comes with. I think he's a uh, tremendous worker. And, um, you know, if you get Seth in there with the right person, he can uh, he can give it a good go, man. I, I think this will probably be one of the better matches on the card, meaning that this will be one of the matches that the crowds particularly get hot for mm-hmm. um, through the duration of the match. I think they'll be able to get the crowd really going. Um, yeah, man, I think it'll be really good. I think the feud has been built pretty well. Um a lot of people loved last night. I thought it was, um, you know, it was, it was pretty good. Mm. Um, I saw people getting really excited and caps up because Riddle said the F word and he got bleeped out. Um, you know, mm. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been uh, all the brawls and everything. Maybe a stipulation would have made a bit of sense. Um, but, you know, yeah, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. It'll probably be, probably won't be the only one the wrestle, so. Yeah, that's fair. Oracle? Yeah, I mean, they honestly should have just... Sometimes you can do... If they didn't want to do a stip match here, they should have just done, like, TV matches before or something. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. this should be a stip match. Um, yeah. I agree. The match will be really good. Like, you know, I mean... Seth Rollins will laugh and embarrass me and <laughs> not want to, like, turn the TV off and... I don't know. Yeah, but like, I don't know. Like, I mean, the match will be good. Yeah, and well, the thing is, like, before last night, it was like, hey, they moved it from SummerSlam and then didn't really build it all that much. I think last night they did a pretty good job with the build. Like, that one segment was very good. The brawl was good. But, like, it mm-hmm. does feel like it's kind of missing something. Like, I guess it'll go to Extreme Rules. They'll do a step match there. But, like, I don't know. It feels kind of flat. Yeah. 
and the thing is they've actually done a pretty good job of building to this but like i feel like there's like missing like parts like i don't know like i feel like there are gaps in like weeks where they didn't build it or whatever i don't know yeah it's missing it's missing some like real meat and kind of like they're having these really heated brawls and everything and it's like we don't we don't quite get why they hate each other so much right know? because it's um, because they're because they're doing it based off the real life heat that they had with the whatever yeah. it was a year or two ago you know and it's like they're not really they're not telling know. that story very well right know? they're not exactly. giving the background to it they're just it's just two guys that randomly hate each other bumping into each other in car parks and they're trying to make it look like a shoot <laughs> it's just yeah, yeah. It's weird. Uh, as long as the match is good which it can be but it will um, be you know We'll see. We'll see what yeah. happens. Yeah, this was cool. I liked how they filmed it. Um, it's not something that you would have seen, I think, before the past month or so in WWE in terms of that presentation. But yeah. like I said, they did a really nice job, I think, last night building it. But the past couple weeks have been kind of strange. I um, hmm. guess we'll just move right along to Gunther against Sheamus for the Intercontinental title. This is going to be... Probably in terms of crowd reaction, might be like the second biggest match of the night in the building. I think the crowd's going to be fired up for both these guys. Um, and really one of the matches where it's very hard to see who's going to win because like, yeah, Gunther's been a good champion and like there's no reason for him to lose, but they have kind of uh, alluded to the fact that Sheamus just needs you know, the one more title for the ultimate Grand Slam, I think is what he called it. Um, mm -hmm. be the first guy to ever do that. So even just you know as simple as that, and then just letting them go out there and beat the shit out of each other. I'm fired up for it, man. Uh, I don't know, Oracle, where you at on this one? Oh yeah, this is gonna fucking rule, man. Like, <laughs> this is like, I'm one of those people who will admit that does sort of miss the old Walter in mm -hmm. a lot of ways, but. I'm not going to begrudge somebody for getting in great shape and doing all that stuff. But, like, this is going to, like, bring Gunther back to, like, Walter days because, like, yeah. he's going to come in there and his, Sheamus is going to hit him with a fucking <laughs> overhand club and he's going to leave a mark on, on Walter or, or Gunther. It, it still takes time for me to ch change the name. Mm -hmm. And, like, he's going to be like, oh, shit, I'm going to fight. And, like, these dudes are going to be marking each other up all fucking night. It's going to roll. They're going to beat the shit out of each other. I cannot wait till like, we get, like, the 10 beats of the Valorant. When Sheamus is going to literally destroy him when he does it. Like, he's going to, like, put everything into it. And, like, of course the chops are going to be just... It's going to yeah. be insane. Like, they're just going to beat the living. And Sheamus knows how to put, a, like, knows how to put, you know, put together a match really well. And like it's just this match is gonna fucking roll. Like yeah, it's, yeah. It's this is interesting because he's really been like one of their most cons consistent guys for the past fifteen years. Like because oh, I remember what seven or eight years ago he was winding down because his back was messed up, and now he's still here. You know, at this like, high people, level. Some people will think this is hyperbolic, but I honestly believe this. I think he's one of the one hundred best in ring wrestlers of all time. Like I, I would have him in my top one hundred. Wow, famous is that good in the ring? Yeah. No, that's fair. He's, uh, he's an exceptional, exceptional worker. Yeah. Monty, you fired up for this one? Yeah, of course I am. Um, you know, as Oracle said, they're just going to beat the absolute shit out of each other. And, you know, uh, you know, Seamus is going to feel that first chop or first strike from Gunther and think, who the fuck does this kid think he is? <laughs> 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 they're just going to club each other. And, um, yeah. Because that's that, that's how you describe it with Seamus. Seamus and Drew, they they yeah. just club people, um, and yeah, but and they aren't just going to beat the piss out of each other for the sake of beating the piss out of each other. Because like Oracle said, Seamus knows actually how to put those matches, especially mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. really well, and so yeah. does Gunther Walter oh, yeah, um, as well. So uh, I think this will be magic, even if it was um, even if it was short. It would still be just mm -hmm. incredible. And uh, Seamus is that good. I do think he is genuinely probably... He's definitely in with a shout of being the best in-ring worker in that company right now. Um, oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I his level of consistency. one overall in 2021 in, in WWE. He was my number one last year. Oh, wow. Yeah, he just he just doesn't... Every match just, you know, you, get, you know what you're going to get. Um, mm -hmm. 
As I, I think it's, I think it's Joe that said it um, over the past couple of weeks. Like when when Moxley gets put on the card, you know exactly what you're going to get. Sheamus mm-hmm. is very similar in that sense. You know he's just going to show up. He's going to club people. You're going to get a nice match, whether it's short, whether it's long. You can kind of do it all. Um, yeah, and this this should be special. The crowd's going to be really hot. I hope it opens. To be honest, um, mm-hmm. yeah, th- this could be really great. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And do you have any read on the winner, or do you just not care like I do? I think Gunther should probably win. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that would do him quite well because uh, I know like nerds like myself love Gunther Walter because we know all about him, but um, he's not. He's still building that presence on the main roster. But mm-hmm. yeah, everybody knows that he can kick the shit out of people, and he's aggressive, and he isn't. Um, you know, he shows no emotion, etc. Like they've built that pretty well, but um, establishing establishing him as as dominant as he has been throughout the rest of his career is still something that they're trying to like build up at the moment. So um, I think Gunther should have like a really long reign because all of Gunther's reigns are long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of like a trademark of his career. So yeah, yeah. Oracle, you going with Gunther, Sheamus? Uh, Gunther, Gunther should probably win. I wouldn't lie because I've I've been like a career long fan of Sheamus. When mm-hmm. he first came, it's funny when he first so when he first debuted in the summer of '09 was on the uh, WWE ECW show. Mm-hmm. So like he came out with it's a shameful thing, and like <laughs> we lo- do like we were watching it. I'll never forget we watching. We burst out laughing. It's ridiculous. Like you know stereotypical looking Irish dude with like spiky red hair and like pale ones. <laughs> it's like, what is this shit? <laughs> and like, um, and then he had the Goldust series that year. He and Goldust, he and Dustin had like an awesome three or four match series on like ECW and superstars where they just like, I don't know, Dustin just, you know, that's the perfect guy to teach how to work. Mm-hmm. And we were like, holy shit. Like me, me and my brothers were like, dude, this guy rules. And um, so then like he had like a brief feud with Shelton, which was okay too. And then he like squashed Jamie Noble and then beat Cena for the fucking title and put Mark Cuban through a fucking table. <laughs> and I was like, this dude fucking rules. Yeah. And so like I was immediately a fan of him. Um so like I would pop if he got that one last like title that he had doesn't have because you know he, he took the photo of his shelf at home or whatever, where he doesn't have the IC title. Mm. But I mean, Gunther, Gunther should win. Yeah, no, that's fair. I, I just, it's nice that like, it's not as predictable as some of these title yeah. defense have been in the past though. So they got that going mm-hmm. for him. Um, so before we get into the trios match, does the way raw ended last night kind of sour the match a little bit for you? No, I, okay. I, I don't think so. Like, because I'm kind of looking at that match. I'm actually excited for the match because I think that'll actually like it's six. I think Alexa Bliss is a better worker now than she used to be in the ring. Mm-hmm. But like, I think she's a okay worker now. Where I used it's to just the way she there. bumps, man. Right. Which right. Is, her it bumping, bumps she's, me. She's afraid <laughs> to bump. She's afraid to bump. That's just what I see. I mean, hell, I'd be afraid mm-hmm. to bump too. So I'm not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, <laughs> But like, and she's afraid to take. But like, in terms of like her offense and she's attitude and stuff, she's better now. But yeah, ultimately, it's six good wrestlers, right? And at least five good workers. And Alexa's getting better. So, I mean, I have high hopes for the match. I think it's actually going to be really good. If if you really like pay attention to the details of like Dakota and Io as a tag team, they're really good. Yeah. Um, it's just their opponents have been poor. Mm-hmm. And the Alexa Oscar match was messy, but I still thought it was a decent match. Um, mm-hmm. And it didn't concern me or anything. Although mm-hmm. Oscar has been working with the PC talent too long because I'll tell you what, 10 years ago, Kana would have been ripping people's heads off with her yeah. back fist. And now she's like playing patty cake and shit. And it's like, come mm-hmm. on, just, just throw one mean, uh, you know, Aja Kong back fist and knock somebody's, Head up, you know, just uh, just just one time, but I get it, you know. You, it's you don't want to be, you know, you don't want to be out there being Nia Jax or anything. But yeah, did know. anyone see? Did anyone see the clip of Nakajima over the weekend? 
No. Uh-uh. Oh, bro. <laughs> um, he just, just straight up kicked a dude in the head while he was sat down <laughs> and knocked him out cold, broke his jaw. Um, oh, it was bad. It was bad. And obviously, this was like three weeks after he just KO'd someone um, with a palm stroke. Yeah. So, uh, you know. You ever Messy. watched? Have you have you ever watched some of those eighties New Japan guys? What's the, I've watched so matches like, uh, here and there. So like uh, Akira Maeda, you ever seen him? Yeah. So like Maeda was like known for like being totally unprofessional. Like one time he like kicked Ricky Joshi's face off on a house show, and Joshi just got mad at him, and then Maeda got fired from New Japan. And then there, like Maeda was just, I mean, he was obviously like the he was a star. He was one of the stars of the original UWF. He basically was one of the original guys to start shoot style pro wrestling. And um, there's a famous match from the eighties where he wrestles Fujinami and like mine has his brutal kicks and man, he gives Fujinami this brutal spin kick and it, he kicks Fujinami right in his eye orbital and the Fujinami's his eye orbital explodes. Oh Have you seen this match? I'm not he's saying he's like that. wrestling with like a, his like eyes like close shut in his eye orbital, like <laughs> crack. He's like wrestling this match. It's amazing. Good lord. Like, so in a way that shit pops me, but like my is a he was a totally unprofessional prick. But like <laughs> <laughs> that shit that shit kind of rules, but like at the same time, I'm I do not begrudge people for not wanting to work with like you know the Maedas or the Thunder Roses of the world. Oh, I mean uh the <laughs> the, um, the guys who are unprofessional and shoot when they get put against each other or get put put against a certain type of person. So like everyone will always go back to um when they threw Loki in there with Joe. Obviously Joe's not unprofessional, but um right. you know throwing Loki in there with someone that will Necro well, Butcher, for example. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's obviously uh... what's those matches are incredible. Oh yeah. I made my girlfriend watch that. Um she's <laughs> horrified. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Monty, you still fired up for the trios match, even though Raw ended the way it did? I'm still fired up for it, definitely, because I've been so fired up pretty much from the start. Uh, yeah. Just the idea of it and just the um, the level they've been presented at, um, the amount of the show that they've been involved in. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it's just all popped me, to be honest. Obviously, last night, kind of... I don't know, man. It would. I think it just would have been called cool the visual of yeah. uh, Eo and Dakota coming out with the belts in the big stadium show. You know, um, mm-hmm. but other than that, I doubt. Um, I doubt it will ruin my enjoyment too much of the match, to be honest. Yeah, because so, I mean, my thought was up. like, you know, if they can't beat Raquel and Aaliyah, why would they be able to beat these three? But that's really not how you're supposed to watch wrestling, I guess. They got screwed. Uh, that's true too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah because be, last night it was really confusing. Because um, we didn't know what was going on, and it took a few minutes for people to point out, like, hold on, <laughs> um, Dakota wasn't legal. But then, of course, you know they kind of made a, uh, you know, made a fuss of it today. Dakota did a little mm-hmm. tweet. Um, the USA Network did a tweet. <laughs> so um, it seems like this is all part of the plan now. But even still, it's just. Yeah. yeah, it it kind of feels like they're just going to run it back on Raw next week now, and then, you know, at the end, maybe another team shows up finally, and then we kind of really get that jump started, but it just, it feels unnecessary, but I don't know, like I said, I would have done the tournament probably next month instead, just because the builds have kind of crossed past too much, and yeah, it's it hard to build a... both of them at the same time. So I thought the build of the trios match was really good the first couple weeks, and then once the tournament really got going, it took a back seat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like, like last night, um, mm-hmm. when the All-Stars had their little squash match, mm-hmm. it just kind of felt just kind of thrown on, you know, when they cut a pretty cookie cut a promo after, and it was just, you know, it was just kind of there. It didn't really feel like there was a lot of thought into it. Uh, then obviously the main event was what it was. Um, but uh, to, to our uncle's point that you made earlier, the matches in this tournament have been pretty brutal. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of fans, myself included, kind of put up with it with the idea that Eo and Dakota were going to win the bouts at the end. And then they didn't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it was just like um, our friend uh, Backle Pangman was saying to me, they just kind of prolonged the agony of it. Mm-hmm. And um, it's not. It's not ideal, to be honest, but 
<laughs> we'll get over it, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Oh, yeah, this... late night Joe has joined the. Oh, I mean late night Grand has joined the. <laughs> this feels like it has to be coming soon, right? Like I like the Alex and Oscar pairing, but they could just have a feud against each other; it'd be fine. She's hinted at it. Yeah, um, she is. Hilariously, and um, you know, not the most enthusiastically when asked about it, but you know, she's hinted at it. The quotes are there, I guess. <laughs> but, yeah. Who uh, do she we wants... think this? Hmm. What's that? Who do we think wins this trios match? Who do we think wins? I think honestly, I think it's going to be Bailey pinning Bianca, and then they're yeah. going to set it up okay. for Extreme Rules. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. That, that just feels like it makes a lot of sense because that could main event Extreme Rules depending on, you know, what the main men's title situation is going to be, which we'll get into in a little bit. But if Ro- Roman's not on the poster, so if he wins, I don't think he's going to be there. And Bailey and Bianca, you know, can main event that show. Yeah. But um. Yeah, um, cool. No, not really. Like, it, my enjoyment hasn't really been affected that much while she's been gone. Honestly, I think they've done a pretty good job. And before, again, the last couple minutes of last night, I was enjoying the show quite a bit. Like, it'll be cool. I think her and Naomi are going to come back at this point probably pretty soon. But I wouldn't say, like, I'm waiting on it like people seem to be doing last night. Like, they thought they were going to be back at the end of that match. And I think that kind of soured the result for a lot of people, too. But no, personally... Like, it'll be cool when they're back, but having them gone hasn't, like, affected my enjoyment that much, I don't think. Yeah, I think um, the Sasha thing's weird because, like you said, they haven't done a bad job at all with the division as a whole uh, under the Triple H era. Mm -hmm. The only glaring mistake you could really point to was last night. Um, So it's not like the division is crying out for as much. Maybe the SmackDown women's division needs more depth and stuff. But the um, thing is with Sasha, she's pretty much done everything in WWE that I'd yeah. like to see her do, except for that maybe getting that one ace run. That, um, a lot of people feel like she deserves. I would feel like she deserves it as well if she does come back, um, as we expect her to do. But I'm not going to be, you know, heartbroken. Or anything if she doesn't if she doesn't come back, you know, it's yeah. not gonna make me it's not gonna make me give up on the division or anything like that. Um But obviously, you know, she's literally probably the greatest female American wrestler of all time, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 always a bonus if she shows yeah, up. Yeah, that's the thing, like I, they've she'll obviously be very nice for them to have and she'll be yeah. positive, but like they've been fine. Mm-hmm. Obviously she's a huge star, so um you know, if they to get Sasha back, to get Bray back, to get Braun back, you know. <laughs> they get they're getting these um, you know, past main eventers. Um yeah. people that they can do stuff with because the you know, they release like 150 people, so you know, you well, build that roster back up, I guess. That's the thing that's come up, you know, like when they're talking about Braun or whoever, like sure they'd like to bring some other people back, but a lot of people they Triple H would probably like to bring back are under contract elsewhere. Yeah, the thing with Braun is, for me personally, um, I was kind, I was getting into Braun towards the end of his WWE run. I thought yeah, he was kind of, was I awesome. th- yeah, I thought I thought he was really kind of starting to find himself as a. He got in great shape too. Remember how good shape he was in? Yeah, mm-hmm. he's, he's still he still is now. Um, yeah. But when you think about what he is, like what seven foot guy is even on his level, really, with that sort of like present, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, Archer's amazing, but he's not like he's tall, but he's not like mm-hmm. you know, he's not like a he's not built like a Braun or an Aziz or an Omos. And those are the guys that I would personally compare Braun to. It's just he's the seven foot guy on the roster. Um, <laughs> because all these other guys at WWE have got Omos, Aziz, uh, Sanger down in NXT, um, Shanky. Like none of these guys can talk to Braun. Not like none <laughs> of them, like at all. And they put all this effort taking a really raw talent with Braun because he was so big and building him up to be a main eventer. He was beating Goldberg at WrestleMania and shit. And yeah. then they just released him. Um so I always thought even when they first released him, I've always thought eventually he would just come back on a um, smaller contract. Mm. So um we'll see what happens with that, I guess. But I do think there is definitely a place for him in WWE. Because, like I said, these other seven foot guys just can't talk to him at all. Yeah. <laughs> no. 
Oracle, any take on uh, Braun, or I guess Bronson Reed was the other big one this week? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not a huge Bronson Reed slash Jonah fan. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think he can be. I, I think I've heard things where he's been good or somewhat lately. I don't know. Um, he was fine in NXT. Um, it was weird because he got really over, and then they like he won a title, and then he got cut. Yeah. Um, Braun, I kind of gone back and forth on. I mean, I know it's Bobby's favorite wrestler. Um, But uh, I don't know. Like, I'm not, I mean, like, I don't miss him, but like, I I do think he's, I do think he could be of some value if he went there, you know? Um, Yeah. I, I, you know, there were times where I thought he was pretty entertaining as an act overall and, and had some good feuds. I mean, the Roman feud in 2017 was outstanding. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, he's, he's probably got some legs left. Um, I mean, I won't be jumping up and down if he comes back, but I also won't be like, Oh, you know, mm-hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, pretty much. Like it's just anytime they get new people at this point, it's kind of exciting just because it's been the same people mostly for the past, however many years since they cut everybody. Yeah. And it just, it's not natural to run it that way. You should have new people coming in and, uh, more often. And you know, it's, it'll be fine. It creates an exciting vibe as well, because, um, you know, anytime wrestling gets really hot and interesting, whether it's, um, whether it's the Monday Night Wars where people were jumping back and forth and you didn't know who was going to show up where each week, whether it was Tony Khan going crazy last year and signing someone every week and it mm. just creates that kind of vibe where you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know who's going to show up, when they're going to show up, mm. um, who's actually being signed, who hasn't, etc. And WWE under Triple H is obviously back in that mode again now where you don't know who's going to show up where. Yeah. Um, and that in itself is really important to have, whether the guys who show up are always hit or whether you get a Dexter Loomis, you know? Um, yeah. The Dexter Loomis stuff last night actually popped me, to be honest. Um, I'm not exactly a fan of his, I'd say. He's not who I would have mm-hmm. put on my list of people to get back. But, um, you know, at least what they're doing with him right this mm-hmm. second isn't, Brutally offensive again. Yeah, it's a right. you know, non-title mid-card right. feud. It's it's fine. They need depth. They do. They need depth. Exactly. So, like I said, not all not all the signings are going to be a Johnny Gargano or you know people who people on the internet want every time. But sometimes that maybe they do need to bring people, you know, the Bronson Reeds back of the world. You know, so uh, you know, Jonas just beat Okada, which is you know hilarious. Wow. Yeah. He's currently booked to face him again <laughs> in October. So it would be hilarious if uh, Triple H could convince him to skip on that and come back to the Fed. Um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I do want to bring up Gargano real quick. I liked what they did with him last night. They haven't done like the empty arena interview in the stands in a while. Um, huh. I'm kind of glad they're not just hot shotting, you know, Gargano against Siri for the pay-per-view. Um yeah, I'm sure the people in attendance would have liked to see Gargano, but I I liked what they did last night. They, in terms of a go home show, they mostly kept it focused on people on the pay per view, so it was good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, he'll be fine. Like I, there was another guy that everyone had like a lot of feelings about last week, and it's just he's fine. He's got to be reined in a little bit, and hopefully, you know, Triple H realizes that it's not the same as it used to be. And you can't run, you know, a 35 minute match where he kicks out of a million finishers. And I think he does. I hope he does. Uh, we'll see. He's, I, I don't mind Gargano, especially now that he's been gone for almost a year. Yeah, definitely. I think with the, uh, with the thing that did with Gargano last night, I really liked it. And like, even Fury's input was, mm-hmm. it, I wouldn't say it was good, but, it made me feel really strongly about keeping him on pre-tapes um, and stuff like that for the meanwhile. Um, it was a lot better than when he's given a microphone in front of a live crowd. Uh, a lot, lot better. Yeah. Um, I've always thought it was absolutely wild how much he was doing that on <laughs> on the main mm-hmm. roster. Uh, so, yeah, th- this was better than the usual from Theory. Um, 
you know, it makes sense. It gives a bit of backstory for the main roster fans who might not get the Gargano Fury dynamic. Um, yeah, man, I think they've done. I think they've done a pretty good job so far with kind of telling that story. So yeah, man, I've I've liked it so far. Hopefully, Gargano can get that briefcase. Look at that! <laughs> Look at I that! I won't be watching. No. I won't be watching that shit. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Uh, we can I get saw... into. Just, oh, yeah, just real quick, just real quick. I saw a clip of the uh, what's it called? One final beat. The yeah. uh, the ma- the really over the top match they're done. And... Oh yeah, you're talking about the one that happened right when COVID started. Yeah, yes. and um, a lot of, the same with a lot of those you know, deep COVID era matches, they were like so bad that I kind of erased them from the line. And mm-hmm. I genuinely, like I know for a fact that I watched that match and I don't remember any of it. So um, I saw the cliff where like uh, Candice does the turn and it just oh, popped me and we've got help. Yeah, it was just so... <laughs> Oh man, it, it was real, but it was, it was a real rough time for wrestling around them. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm so, I'm thinking about it. I was so bad. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Roman Reigns, undisputed Universal Championship on the line against Drew McIntyre. And, you know, for all we could say about the rest of this card, about, you know, how some of it hasn't hit, I think between the trios match and this match, like, they've done a really good job solidifying those as two, like, stadium caliber matches. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, this is the first time in probably I was thinking about it yesterday, like, since the Kevin Owens stuff that I actually yeah. thought Roman could lose the title. So that alone mm-hmm. kind of makes it a big thing. Like, uh, I'm curious, Oracle, what are your thoughts on this? Like, do you think Roman's finally going to lose? I mean, it kind of feels like if he's going to, this is your moment to do it. I mean, look, Drew McIntyre is a polarizing character. I think most people think he's a good worker. Mm-hmm. Um his character where he's wandering around with a fucking sword, you know, it's like, you know, silly or whatever. I mean, I'm a big Drew McIntyre fan. Um, I think the crowd's going to be hot for this match big time. Yeah. Um, although someone says, I hope he gets booed. <laughs> just, just, just to see the test for the sake. <laughs> um I mean, he is Scottish. He's not. He's he's not Welsh. I don't know how that. I don't know how that works out there. Monty Monty might have a better idea how those feuds and rivalries work. I don't know how. I don't know. Y'all hate each other out there. Um, I don't think so. I think they all just hate. I think I think they all just hate English people. I think that's kind of how it works. And we and we and we 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 don't mind everyone else. It's just we we don't we don't realize everyone hates us. We're kind of oblivious to it. Right, kind of like, kind of like, kind of like Americans. Like everybody loves us. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not that naive. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I, I think the match will be really, really good. Yeah. I'm with people though. Like, if Drew loses, I think he's, I think he's dead, man. Like, it's be really, it's gonna be bad if he loses. Like, I don't know. I mean. I kind of think he should win, mm-hmm. but like I, I would get it if Roman retained at the same time. But like, I don't know. Like, they've really built Drew up all summer, and like, mm-hmm. for him to lose, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It just seems like it seems like a uh, you're kind of just hurting another main eventer. I yeah. think I think if they feel like they've booked, if they feel like they've booked themselves into a corner with this and they're kind of unsure with what to do, I think uh, our good friend and fan of the fan of the show, Dave Meltzer, said something uh, to the effect of they're kind of still figuring it out now. Um, mm-hmm. By the way, at the start of the week, last week, I believe, um, something like that. Anyway, they I'd probably be tempted to just give Drew a short reign just so we can get this win. And just put it back on Roman at like in like two months or something. Yeah. Um, when they first seemed like they were going into this feud, it kind of had no juice into it. It was just mm-hmm. it, it almost had the vibe of just another Roman challenger, which a lot of other people have recently. But they've done a really good job of building it and you know making the people believe, as they call it, and. Yeah, they've really put themselves in a position where they could actually pull the trigger with Drew here and uh, put the belt on him, which is a testament to them and building the match and 
making the fans wonder who's going to win, which is uh, always going to be the hard thing with Roman two years into a world title reign. <laughs> the crowd's going to be hot. It would be cool to see Drew get his moment. Uh, I think there is definitely something to be said for what Oracle said earlier about if Drew loses this, he could be dead in the water as um mm-hmm. as kind as like a true top guy, you know. Um, yes. He can obviously he'll always be in and around the main event because of course, right? But yeah, again to Oracle's point, I think if he loses this, this could be uh, quite damaging long term. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I think if I had to put make a prediction, I think he actually will win. Mm. Thanks to Sami Zayn. Oh, <laughs> Sami like, Zayn is like by accident, <laughs> dude. Those <laughs> segments where he like sits in the like <laughs> he sits in the backstage and like makes faces and like does his stick is amazing. He's mm. unbelievable. He's like one of the best wrestlers in the world. <laughs> just, just because of the way he is, you know, um, he's one of the only wrestlers around today that's legitimately like hilarious. Um, yeah, he made he made that Knoxville feud, like he made that mm-hmm. Knoxville feud when he was like wandering yeah. around Knoxville. God, I wish I had known he was the red <laughs> carpet. It was like um, it was like Andy Kaufman, you know. It was yeah. uh, it was <laughs> it was so. Stupid, <laughs> you know. It was, just, it was, you know, it was. Oh, some people. That's quite divisive for some people. Uh, that yeah. match and that build, but I fucking loved it. Yeah, Everything it about it, I thought it was, it was tremendous. I yeah, love Sami Zayn. This feels like it's gonna happen now. I know we said uh, Gargano mm-hmm. Champ would beat the Usos, but just go with this now. You got it, you know, perfectly set up, I think, and uh, you know, running at Extreme Rules or whatever. And pe- I've, people love I've to got see an it. idea. Yeah, go ahead. This is fantasy booking, totally fantasy booking, but I, but but from what they booked, it it, it can make sense. Mm-hmm. Sammy, you can even say by accident cost Roman right mm-hmm. to protect Roman. Drew wins, kind of like a, I mean, obviously the uh, the Eddie Brock was different because Goldberg legitimately cost Brock the title, whatever. You know, Sammy comes in. Accidentally, Huluva kicks Roman or whatever. Chaos, whatever. Drew gets rid of the Usos. Roman goes for a spear. Drew moves, hits Claymore, wins title, whatever. So they get this whole thing. So you get Sami Zayn and KO eventually sort of team up with Drew and like kind of feud with the bloodline. Of course, you, know, you, you could do Drew and Karrion Cross for extreme old and have Drew oh. beat the shit out of them. Yeah. You know? um, <laughs> and then you can kind of have like a – I'd be down for like a bloodline versus uh, Drew and, and Owens and, and Zayn at Survivor Series and like a fucking TLC match or some fucking crazy shit. Yeah, that'd be cool. That shit would fucking roll. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I actually, I think Drew's going to win. You know, he never got his moment in front of fans with Brock. Um, so this is a chance to get that. Plus, it feels like Drew winning is the only way that you can really split the titles anytime soon. Just because, you know, he's going to be like, oh, I'm a fighting champion. And then he'll just lose one of them somehow. And just get a title back on Raw. You could just drop the universal back to Roman. Yeah, you can do that, yeah. But, like, yeah. Yeah. it just, if Drew doesn't win, I guess... I don't know who beats Roman then. That's the thing. Because we've kind of all Cody. kicked this around for quite some time since this pay-per-view was announced. Um, and I would do Cody, but I think if, you know, Rock's ready to do WrestleMania, they're going to do Roman and Rock, which doesn't need the title. But they'd put it for the title anyway because that's just what they do. Like, i do Roman and Cody, but I think what you do is you'll have two belts by then and it ends up being Seth and Cody for the title. Let me tell you something. If Dwayne shows up and works that match, brother, Roman's really going to have to do a lot of talking to the camera because that cardio... <laughs> If 2012, 2013, going to have <laughs> yeah. no cardio. Imagine what he's like now. Oh, yeah. He's sitting there huffing and puffing. Imagine Roman's if he just squashed him. him. <laughs> yeah, he should. That isn't that, isn't that crazy. To no. Right. <laughs> like, bro, just squashes him in like three minutes. Rock does. Rock can do a bit of his shit, you know? Yeah, Rock, they could do like the, they could do like, 
they could do a five minute match where Rock like does the latest SmackDown and then like hits the spine on the pine as JR how, used to say. How long was Hogan Rock? Hogan Rock was like, oh gosh, it was like 15, 20 minutes. Because remember mm-hmm. the the face off was like five six minutes long itself. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like the face off, <laughs> yeah. minus the face off, it's probably around like nine minutes. You know. <laughs> But yeah, man, so it's something to that effect where like the rock can get all these pops in and you know, you know the crowd will go absolutely ballistic for it all. And um but overall I think you could definitely get away with Roman somewhat squashing him, you know? Yeah. That's fair. Um, all right, so Monty, overall, what's your excitement level for this show out of ten? Hmm. Um Eight point five. Fair. Really interested to see what they'll do with it because it's Triple H's like first real. He's built the pay per view and done the feuds for, and um, it's in the UK. It's a stadium show. I think it'll be. A, he'll want to make statements again. Um, like I thought that he tried to do with uh, you know bringing Bailey in back and stuff at SummerSlam. I think he's going to go even harder. I think we could potentially get. I think we could potentially get Sasha. I think we could potentially get Bray. I think we could potentially get something that actually shocks people. Um, yeah. And yeah, like Seamus versus Seamus versus Walter, um, Drew potentially winning the big one. That's kind. Of, Seth versus Riddle will be good on the card as well. Mm-hmm. That's kind of that's kind of all I need, man. The big UK stadium crowd. I think the crowd is going to carry a lot of it. Not necessarily carry, but add. Um, yeah, man, I'm quite fired up for it, especially for a WWE pay per view, man. Yeah, Oracle, where are you at out of ten? I'd give it like a six or a seven. You know, I think it's 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 uh you know six matches I actually like. Um, a, a couple of them I'm not thrilled with, but like the big ones I think have been built to really well, and I think mm-hmm. they'll deliver. Um, and I think we'll have a night, you know, a couple of fun results. So. Yeah, six or seven sounds right. It's it's. I think it's going to be a big hot crowd. I'm I'm excited for it. Um, still don't know if I'm going to watch it live. Yeah, I, I'm kind of debating that. You know, I don't know, man. Those noon games are pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, they are. You're right. I mean, I I may I may end up watching it live with a noon game on a laptop. So yeah, there you cool. go. You need to see Lexi all caps in front of that UK crowd, bro. Live, yeah. live. Shut up. It's his fault. Um, yeah, about an 8.5, too. Like, it should be a pretty good show. It should be a good environment. Um, you know, hopefully it leads to them doing something like this every year for our UK friends. Um, yeah. Pretty good. But, uh, yeah, you guys got anything else? Mine, you want to plug your stuff? Uh, oh, I guess I might as well every time I'm here. Uh, WrestlePurist.com, at WrestlePurist on Twitter. Um my art is displayed on the net, uh, on the screen. If you want to follow my personal account, um, uh, is there anything interesting that we've done recently? Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube as well. We can do super chats now, so send us money. There you go, Oracle. <laughs> anything to plug? Uh, I think I will be joining you guys on uh, Thursday. Uh, all my all my Vols friends are going to the game. Oh. Um, so I'm of course a South Carolina fan. I could care less about the balls, but sure. when all your best friends are balls, you know, or balls fans, well, you know, <laughs> ball fans, nothing wrong with that. Um, but balls, balls fans, um, you know, it's just kind of like, uh, you kind of get stuck in, uh, you know, socializing during football season, watching some stuff you don't care for sometimes, but luckily they're going to the game. So I will, uh, and I'm sure Monty just loves hearing about college football. <laughs> it pops really me, you know, um, just hearing just hearing people talk about it. Uh, it's <laughs> someone replied to one of Bob's tweets, or it might have been one of the late night grin tweets, saying, uh, "Can you talk about one of the games instead?" And they mentioned the two teams, and I genuinely didn't know if it was a basketball team, if it was a football <laughs> team. I didn't know what it was. So, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> no, that rules. Um, yeah, it's a lot of back- podcast, man. Yeah. We will be back uh, Thursday night for Late Night Grin. We are previewing All Out, I believe, and probably yeah. doing some other stuff. It'll be uh, 
myself, Oracle will be there, Shoot will be back, and uh, Manny and Dukes. So really all-star squad there. And Isn't uh, Dukes like 12? How old yeah, yeah, you're going to have to... <laughs> Have to deal with that, but he's good though. Oh yeah, I'm just I'm good teasing. hand. <laughs> um, good hand. But yeah, that'll do it for us, and uh, enjoy this outro.